Everyone knows that I love me some Ninja Turtles from the go ninja, go ninja, go! to the original Eastman and Layer. There are a lot of totally radical unknown facts about the Ninja Turtles that I really want to share with you guys today and I'm speaking very quickly. How about you guys just hop into the turtle van and let's get started. That wasn't pervy at all. Bring it on. Ninja Turtles is actually a spin-off to Daredevil. The canister of ooze that made the turtles is the same ooze that blinded Murdoch. Mind blown. And I bet the turtles never even saw it coming. Boo doo boo! <laughs> the foot is actually a parody of Marvel's The Hand. If I had a gang, I'd probably call it the snatch. <laughs> Different words for vagina. So much fun. Playmates, the original toy company that took on the turtles, solely made the cartoon to sell toys. Not really surprised here. They were really successful in what they did and were pretty content in no longer making any more toys and episodes. But after many, many a discussion, the series continued. <laughs> Similar to Back to the Future, studios had no idea what they had. When filming began, a movie house had yet to pick up the turtles. Eventually, New Line Cinema picked it up. And I know this because every time I see the New Line Cinema's logo, I think I'm about to see the intro to the original movie or Mortal Kombat. That felt good. But it also turned out to be the highest grossing independent film ever. That is until it was topped by that piece of shit, The Blair Witch Project. I have a runny nose. You know what you also have? Zero replay value. The beautiful puppets that we call the Ninja Turtles were made by none other than Jim Henson Studios. Henson said the suits were by far one of the most advanced products he had ever created. Oddly enough, Henson regretted to agreeing to this film because it was far too violent. Manhattan has and always will be home to the Big Turtles. What the heck was that? Look like sort of a big title. However, in order to keep budget to a minimum, they shot in NYC a grand total of four days. So, yep, the majority of the film was shot in sound stages in Wilmington, North Carolina, including April's newsroom. In the original film, creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird got their own shout out. Sam Rockwell, who we have seen playing Tony Stark's enemy in Iron Man 2, tells officers that they can find everything they are looking for over at the East Warehouse over in Lairdman Island. And if that wasn't enough, Eastman has a very teeny tiny itsy bitsy role in the film as he plays the garbage man whose truck is later stolen by Casey Jones. No joke, you can, you can see him in the far, far back. You really look um, towards the end of that final fight. <laughs> Sally Manke, who has worked on all of Tarantino's films, got her editorial debut on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So as a female editor myself, I appreciate this fact very much. The turtle suits were beautifully made, but not without their own hiccups. Okay, so not that this is a shock or anything, but the suits were said to be extremely warm. So warm that the actors in the suit lost an easy 20 pounds while filming. They would have to call cut just to give the guys some air, and I feel for their pain, okay? Because I was the Nesquik bunny mascot for two fucking years. No, I'm not, I'm not joking, that's me. That is me in the suit. <laughs> So back to the turtle suits. The animatronics that were used in the masks. I love the word animatronics. Animatronics. Animatronics used in the masks were also sharing a frequency with a local airport. So during certain points while filming, the masks would just go haywire, just full blown turtle stroke. And now the creepy animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's come to mind. Also, the suits were so big that they did not fit through your average sized manhole. And the child within me is giggling many a giggle because I am a perv. So yeah, they had to order custom sized manholes in order to get the turtles in and out. In and out. And did I mention that these suits were about 50 pounds each? So I give major props to the professional stuntmen who had to kick all sorts of ass while wearing 50 pounds of foam rubber. <laughs> Speaking of the suits and professional stuntmen, Golden Harvest, a production company based in Hong Kong, who's responsible for many Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan films in the US, is also responsible for all three Ninja Turtles films. Tatsu, who was second in command in the Foot Clan under Shredder, is played by Toshishiro Obata, a real martial artist who created his own style of Japanese swordsmanship called Shinkendo. Sounds a lot like Nintendo. So yeah, this explains why the action scenes in these films are filled with all sorts of fuck yeah. Because yeah, real martial artists. 
when it came to the first film, Pizza Hut did not deem the Turtles franchise worthy of their product placement, so they had to go with Domino's instead. So one would have to wonder why any New Yorker, mutant or not, would order from any of those two chains. Because of New York! Though by the time the second film came out, they realized they made a huge mistake. They even sponsored the Coming Out of Our Shells tour in 1990. Yep, it's true. Once upon a time, Eastman and Laird created a fifth turtle and named it Kirby after none other than legendary comic book artist Jack Kirby. Apparently he was conceptualized for a never produced fourth film and the character was to appear out of this magic crystal and he would bring drawings to life. Like, holy, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's just say this show was far worse than watching Barney come to life and sing about PB&J on repeat. Even Laird himself stated, The only licensed product that I truly regret is Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. The even sadder part about this is that this was produced by Sabin Entertainment, the same folks who brought you the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Who can forget the classic self-titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES? Which, by the way, sold over 4 million copies and is considered one of the toughest NES games to play. Boy, was that fucking right. Kawaba, kawa, 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 bunga! Overall, there have been 23 games released since 1989, and that is pretty damn freaking awesome. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have gone through their good and bad times, and for the most part, we've been there through it all. Especially those who consider themselves to be 80s and or 90s kids. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I and while the creators themselves may not have always agreed to certain changes that the franchise has taken over the past few decades, Decades, it's inspiring to know that it all started with a doodle. A doodle that just about changed the lives of two struggling artists. So thank you for the turtles. Got a little schmutz on ya. Geeklings, there are so many other cool facts where this came from that I would love to share with all of you. So let me know if you'd like a pot too and share some of your own unknown facts yourselves in the description below. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share and visit Aggressive Comics for the latest and greatest in geeky news. And until we meet again, stay geeky, my friends. April Lo, I mean Jenny Lorenzo, reporting out. <laughs>